Well, hello again, race fans, and welcome to the very first round here in Sparta, Kentucky. It is the iRacing IndyCar Series, the big series here in 2021, season four, first race, first week of the new season. It's going to be 75 laps of battling that they're going to be doing out there today, and I am so happy to be joined alongside uh here in the booth uh by none other than gary godso so glad to have gary joining us here uh in the vo virtual racing dot network booth a booth and so great to have so many of you joining us from around the world on our youtube channel gary welcome to the booth oh you make me sound like such a celebrity but uh huge indycar fan that's what i like that's what i like to promote uh, and uh when the opportunity said, uh, hey, Gary, you want to come join me in the booth? Uh, I, I got to jump at it. Uh, Kentucky Speedway is not very far from my house, about two and a half hour, maybe a three hour drive at most. Um, kind of regret not going to any races when they went there. IndyCar visited the site between 2000 and 2011. Uh, since then, the track's been reconfigured, probably should go back again. But uh, we're going to see high speeds, 200 miles per hour. We're not going to see a pack race just because of the way the track's configured. Uh, we're probably looking at a, uh, the window to get to the finish opens at about lap 24 or so, uh, 50 laps to a tank. So we're definitely going to have to see a pit stop and we're going to see for the first time uh, tire limits. Uh, everybody gets three sets uh, to uh, determine how they're going to get to the finish. And uh, tires might play a little bit of a role in this one, especially getting through turns three and four uh, the fast way, because you're going to have to kind of hang that right rear out a little bit. You bet. Hang it out a little bit. And of course, the uh, the weather here for today's session, a balmy 96 degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, that will lead to a little bit more tire degradation. You have to stay on top of those tools out there, Gary. You love to play around with these uh, Indy cars in your off time. Um, you think they're going to be doing a lot of adjustments out there today to keep the car fresh? Or do you think this is pretty much you just set it and forget it? Uh, no, no, this, uh, we already talked about the strength of field with these guys well over 4k and, uh, these guys don't get 4k ratings uh, or a combined 4k reading, uh, by, uh, not using those tools, uh, with fixed any <laughs> car, the, the tools are there. That is the difference between victory and, or defeat oftentimes in this uh, league with the fixed setups. So they will be, uh, if not lap to lap, uh, if not, uh, every corner sometimes doing something, whether it be the roll bars, the weight jacker. Uh, I prefer myself a loose setup, so I like to go very firm on the rear bar, very soft on the front bar, and uh, like to go into the high positives on that weight jacker. And what that's going to do is going to run that right rear a little ragged, kind of hang it out there. And uh, often you'll see people that lose uh, use a little too much weight jacker. What's going to happen? It's on corner exit, and we'll see this uh, in three and four. Um, not going to say we're necessarily going to see it in this race. Probably, uh, maybe, maybe in the lower split, but we'll see. Everybody's human. Um, we might see that uh, on exit of three and four uh, right there, that that uh, car just kind of do a snap loose thing. And that's only a sign of a high weight jacker. And the weight jacker, you got to get it up into a decent uh, range here on three and four to help you get through there because the track is much flatter in three and four than it is in one and two. When they reconfigured the track, the track was seven, uh, 14 degrees all the way around. They reconfigured it kind of like an opposite of, a, of the new Texas scan. Uh, where they made the banking in one and two, uh, increased it to 17 degrees, but they kept the 14 degrees uh, in three and four the same. So when you have your car set up for one end, it's not going to work necessarily in the other. So you need to make a decision what you want to do. Also, uh, the uh, crack in three and four, or excuse me, one and two does appear a little bit narrower. So some people are going to run through there pretty much single file. Uh, and I've also been hearing that the arrow push is really bad. So uh, getting a run on somebody in, off of one and two and trying to get them into three and four is a bit of a challenge. Uh, a challenge. And yet uh, these drivers set for that challenge, excited for the challenge. And as you were just watching there, as uh, Gary was letting us know all the ins and outs of what these drivers are going to be facing today. Jorge Varela up there into the top position. No surprise. I was watching earlier, Gary, um, uh, the races earlier going on in the Fix Series. Varela is practically unstoppable at Kentucky, coming away with a couple of wins already today. Um, it was a question mark whether Varela would be able to be here for this particular race, but no doubt cementing that top position thus far as we wait for this one to just finish up here in a couple of seconds. And also, if you notice, Alexis Newsom, who's shown well here on virtualracing.network on at the uh, IndyCar iRacing series, 
uh, broadcast winning a race recently, now up there into second position in the qualifier. So let's take a look here on your screen as we can get some of this junk off of there and take a look at the results. We actually have uh, Jorge Varela there in first, Alexis Newsom second, Timothy Stroh takes third, Oscar Gonzalez there in fourth, Jesper Orman uh, actually was kind of questioning whether he would get a great qualifier in today, finishing with fifth. So that'll be a great starting spot. And then Alvaro Gonzalez in uh, sixth place, seventh Javier Gonzalez, eighth going to Pablo Diaz Frances, and ninth Nacho LDR, tenth going to Thomas Christensen, part of that Three Crowns Racing family. There you can see the rest, Carlos Palermo, Matthew Turner showing up. Uh, for the race, appreciate that. AJ Musselman, another driver you're going to be recognizing from all different areas of the iRacing IndyCar series uh, in the official series that are out there, as well as other leagues just all over the place at AJ Musselman. Oliver Silva also uh, in the field today, qualifying 14th, Octavio Rondoletto, Craig Forsyth, another driver who seems to get in and out of a lot of different races. Great to have all of these drivers with us. Guillermo, Guillermo uh, Pacarul, excuse me for mispronouncing your name, but great to have you with us, Guillermo, starting in 17th. Howard Livingston, part of the U.S. IndyCar League family, race winner there. We also broadcast, on, of course, on virtualracing.network, the U.S. IndyCar League, and great to have him joining us for this race here in Top Split Thursday. 19th, uh, Per Bern uh, Mikkelsen joining us, as well as Hugo Olsen just barely getting in a lap, and Burstring Cordier finishing it out in 21st. There are three splits here today. Gary, if you're a driver lining up, what's your first thoughts on the day? You think we're even going to get in a full green flag stint? I've been seeing a lot of cautions. Well, uh, it happened to be that the, uh, the, uh, the, the top split on Monday got to right before the pit stops uh, came open uh, for, the, for the late window. They went almost 50 laps before they uh, got the first incident in. And uh, that really caught one of the guys in this uh, race uh, that's pretty similar in this race. He pitted up, uh, caught him out. He pitted early. He was trying to get the, uh, trying to do the over on the, uh, on the pit stops. And that was uh, Pablo Francis there with uh, Nikki, Ra Nikki Racing. Uh, he decided he was going to pit early, and just as soon as he hit pit road, that's when the caution came out, and it really screwed his chances for the rest of the day. So um, pit road here is an agonizingly slow 45 miles per hour. So once you commit yourself to pit road, there is no going back. <laughs> no going back, and those three tire sets, if we do have a lot of cautions, that could really play a role for these drivers in their strategy, something to really consider going forward and how you'll adjust maybe as the race goes on but it will be Jorge Varela next to Alexis Newsom bringing us to the green flag we are set for 75 laps of action and I'm excited brand new season championship Thursday this is where you are if you want to get the championship in the Indy Fix series highest strength of field and we wait for this one to kick off Ho Jorge Varela starting alongside, as I mentioned, Alexis Newsome, everybody in a row. Green, green, green. And we are green in Kentucky, Gary. Very patiently brought them down. Uh, he gets a great jump there to pole sitter. Already three wide back there for P3, and we're already settling off down the backstretch. As we go through two, it is Oscar Gonzalez alongside of Jesper Orman, and now trying to make a move up on Timothy Stad Stroh. We have great movement there in the midfield drivers many of them jockeying for position we're watching oscar gonzalez here move quickly to the front but it's still jorge varela and alexis newsom who lead this field Alba, uh, gonzalez got a great run on the high side on lap one two three and four uh that brought him nearly up to the leaders uh but he got stalled a little bit by one of the uh, nikai racing cars like some of these drivers definitely trying to make their way forward in a hurry. We've got Gonzalez already up a spot. Now we're looking at uh, Al Alvaro Gonzalez also up two spots. Timothy Stroh drop dropping down two spots on that start. And Nacho LDR moving forward. It's a little difficult to tell the difference between the Necky racing cars because they're all painted so similarly. So we'll do our best to try to mark that for you. But no doubt about it, it is Jorge Varela still in the front, fastest lap of the race last time by was a 24.90. 
So he's getting it done out front, Gary. I just do the math for you at home, a 24902, 216.850 miles per hour. They're really smoking, but hey, that's not even the track record for IndyCars. Uh, IndyCar is a set track record that still stands to this day. Uh, and uh, most people will be like, well, you know, it had to be like a Scott Dixon or maybe a Sam Hornish or uh, something maybe like uh, uh, maybe an Ari Leindyke from the early, early IRL days. It's Sarah Fisher, 221 miles per hour. She has a pretty good luck at this track. She had the fastest lap, and her team got the win the last time any cars visited here in 2011. That is an astounding fact, and I'm so glad you're with us, Gary. You're bringing some stuff to the table already. I love it. Uh, that's an amazing thing. Uh, yeah, I know. And then Sarah bouncing around afterwards, getting to not only celebrate having a family, but then also uh, moving on and having part in the series driving the pace car uh, going on even further and starting a karting facility in indianapolis and so it's so cool to see somebody who you wouldn't normally associate with being a top the top driver in indycar getting one of those things but everybody wins or gets a fast time in there somehow uh but no, no surprise here unfortunately it is jorge varela who is on the pole and dominating this race thus far already opening about a four tenths of a second lead over alexis newsome and alexis has got to be a little concerned here as it's now dropping back to six tenths of a second um you don't want to drift too far back gary that that could be a problem as perhaps jorge could go off the front a bit yeah uh, the draft envelope of these cards is about a second and a half so uh if she falls outside of that second and a half she is losing that draft uh this is, should not turn into a fuel mileage race but every indycar driver especially at the top splits upper indycar drivers are always thinking fuel mileage you want to stay within that draft to help with every little bit of fuel helps um, it even helps during on pit road, even if it's not a fuel race. Uh, that's less you have to put in your car. That's less time in the box. That might actually make up a position on pit road. So everyone's looking to economize, want to stay in that second and a half. But also, if you fall too far behind, uh, you will get that clean racetrack, uh, but you won't have benefit of the mileage. No benefit of the mileage. Uh, yeah, and, and it can do some good things maybe for your tires uh, because you do end up working those tires pretty heavy when you're in the draft. However, if you do lift out, you do pick up that extra fuel mileage. And this is where it can get really handy if uh, perhaps Jorge Varela's Mass Devils teammates can get up there and maybe give give Jorge a hand and take some of that load off, maybe do some of the leading. It's funny, the, the correlations between this and for example, bicycle racing, same thing. You have a big team and you let a lot of the, the riders in the team go up there, break the air and do the hard work up front. So you can save some uh, save some energy, but nevertheless, here in IndyCar, this is happening at 220 miles an hour. Any wrong move, any wrong strategy, you can end up in the wall or down a lap. Gary, these drivers, this is a great race so far. We've managed to make it over 10 laps. We're we're working on lap 12 here, and uh, we haven't had a caution flag yet. Good. As soon as they got uh, kind of separated out a little bit, um, as uh, it looks like Alexis is starting to reel in our leader a little bit. Um, but uh, as soon as uh, they got spread out a little bit, uh, everyone got uh, kind of within that uh, single file bit. And uh, again, I, I told you, oh, there's that first caution. Um, not <laughs> sure what course. happened there, but uh, uh, what I'm sure that the arrow push in turns one and two is really causing a lot of people havoc right now. Well, unfortunately, it did catch out Timothy Stroh in the Stroh special there. Beautiful livery, custom paint job on this Delara IR18 absolutely uh sadly it's uh, it's not as pretty as it once was let's go ahead and go back here we'll see if we can get this one backed up and take a look at it on your screen I've had a little help may have had a little help there indeed um did you catch who that driver was it's a green and white car Octavio we... Octo Octo Octavio Well, nevertheless, it's one of those incidents that will absolutely take you out of the race. And uh, unfortunately, that will do, <laughs> will 
um, put Timothy Stroh on pit on pit uh, road to take the damage repair. And well, and everyone's mark. coming in, and the pit window is not open yet. Uh, pit window is going to open about lap 24. You got some guys uh, a little bit further back in the field are going to go ahead and take this opportunity to top off. Maybe when the uh, cycle comes through, uh, they catch a lucky yellow, and they will. Uh, uh, get a lap up on everybody, and it'll decide the race amongst them. But no, we are still in a point where uh, one uh, pit stop is not going to get you to the end here. Uh, the window really opens up for a lot of these cars uh, right around lap 24. And if you're uh, uh, playing the conservative game, maybe 23, uh, uh, maybe you know, right, right, any anywhere plus or minus that 24, maybe you can make it to the end. Uh, but really, 24 is definitely where that window is going to open up for all of these drivers. Well, you see the first driver to make one of those stops pulling in Jesper Orman, no no stranger to strategy, no stranger to uh, iRacing. But again, who knows whether that three tire rule for this race is going to even play in effect. I do know <laughs> that at some point, if we have enough cautions, people are going to keep trying to hit and take fresh tires, but you will run out. And I do know that has I've, I've been hearing stories all week of people who have been caught out in the past from their league races, etc., where uh, you, you come in, you take a couple of sets of tires, and then you're forced to take your last set of tires and go an extremely long stint. So uh, while it's not a factor now, with that may be a factor come 65 laps into the 75 lapper. Well, um, in IndyCar racing for real, there is tire limits. The fact is you just really don't hear about it because often... Uh, the team aspect, uh, they'll go down another pit to grab another set of tires to need it because they'll throw in another set of tires because they're moving so fast. There's a safety, safety factor involved here. So they're not going to say, hey, man, you can't throw another set of tires on your car. They might get a bit of a penalty or something, but they can't just say, hey, we're not. you can't throw another set of tires uh, on your car because you just run out. These guys are so fast that, you know, really it's a safety factor in here. So they do try to put loose limits on these cars in real life. So this is the first time the fixed series has faced uh, tire limits. A lot of times these guys never really had to go to that black box, really had to go and uh, figure out what the uh, box is up. You do it in the open series, but you don't really do it here uh, where you can change your tire pressures and everything. But now you're just changing tires. Yes, on, yes, off, that type of thing. And a lot of them, some of that, they might not have it mapped. If they're not prepared, they're not ready to uncheck those boxes. You don't uncheck the right boxes. You hit pit road, you hit your stall. You might have one lap on those tires. You're getting a new set, whether you like it or not. We're getting ready to go green. We are getting ready to go green, and yeah, you are getting... <laughs> There's so much to configure, and no, you've got to fly this aircraft, essentially, with all of these different dials and gauges. It's a little easier because you don't have to make your own setup, but here in the Fix Series, you still got to control all of those things, so it's um, it's a constant battle to figure out exactly what you want to do with the, uh, the car over the course of the race, but we are back to green. Jorge Varela leading us back to green, and... Now looking out the back of Varela's machine at Newsom, didn't seem like Newsom was right up on the gearbox of Varela, but uh, we'll see here as these drivers continue. So once again, your top nine drivers not electing to take tires on that stop, or, or not electing to stop rather during that yellow. So it's gonna leave them at a definite disadvantage as we see Jesper Orman already starting to try to make moves back there from 10th position. Yeah, I want to see the five cars, see if he makes up any ground on uh, the cars in front of him uh, with those freshies that he has on. I um, also want to pay attention to him there. There he is. He just made a position on uh, P10, so he's up to nine. also want to see uh, what, if any, damage may have occurred to the uh, to uh, P11, the two-car Octavio, because he was in that incident uh, uh, with uh, with Timothy Stroh right there going into turn three. So I don't know if he has any damage or not. Uh, but um, that would want that would cause me to be if I was racing around them to be a little extra cautious because uh, after these tires get warmed up, um, they might go for a ride somewhere, and I don't want them to go for a ride around me. That's for sure. <laughs> well, look, look like uh, Octavio Octavio got a little close to Per Bjorn Mickelson there, um, and I think uh, Per Bjorn kind of taking the, uh, the discretionary move of backing out a little bit, letting Octavio kind of go <laughs> past <laughs> and. Uh, don't don't you think that these drivers take notes on other drivers, especially when someone races them rather aggressively? And right now, that's pretty aggressive racing going uh, 20 laps into a 75 lap race. It's like pace yourself. Aggressive racing is not rewarded well in these cars. 
uh, they don't give us much of a choice because these uh, races are often sprints. You only get one pit stop and that's it. If they made them a little bit longer, I think you see people with more patience. But ultimately, patience is always rewarded with these cars. Absolutely. Patience is, uh, they say patience is a virtue at all times, but certainly in these cars, in the, in the especially in the fixed series, just waiting for the optimal time to attack, waiting for the time that you want to be in to, uh, to defend on the outside, on the inside. You just have to wait for the car to develop the way that you need it to. Hey, Jessica Sabin sending us a shout out from the YouTube chat room. So great to have you with us. She's, uh, of course, Prime Meridian Racing League uh, administrator over there and uh, does a great bang up job with the rest of the team. Also uh, great to have Goyo Emiliano Dorso dropping by saying uh, vamos Rondoletto, go juncos, go green. So thank you for stopping by uh, Goyo, appreciate it. Letting us know uh, who you're rooting for and uh, also Haddad stopping by, go juncos, go green, go Rondo. So we know who they're rooting for in the chat room and it is Octavio Rondoletto, the 41, who is uh, on their mind, I think. got his work cut out for him though right now in ninth position so uh the driver from Rio Cuarto there trying to I mean already up six spots so I mean uh but uh, to get up there in the top five possibly as you mentioned having a little bit of damage earlier on in that incident but now looking to possibly take on Jesper Orman just ahead so we'll keep an eye on that battle as well oh yeah he's plus six but elbows out <laughs> Well, he's got a 5,880 I rating. Uh, again, so great to have so many drivers that are top split, high rated drivers joining us for this broadcast race. Um, but Octavio with 5,880, you got to assume that Octavio knows exactly what he's doing out there. Perhaps uh, maybe a little aggressive at times, but sometimes, you, you know, Gary, I don't know. You, it, I don't want to say it's the red mist, but sometimes you just you, you got to get your elbows out and you got to say I'm, enough is enough i'm not going to take any more people trying to bully me out of the way or anything i'm i'm going to hold my own or i'm going to come forward because my car is ready and i think that again i think that a lot of that has to do with the way that these races are constructed if they were a little bit longer i think a little bit more less less of a sprint and more of a mini marathon I think you see a change in strategies. Uh, right now, everyone treats it as a sprint, uh, and that's kind of what they're set at. But uh, I mean, really, if you think about the history of IndyCar, you think about some of the names, uh, you know, the easiest one, Rick Muir, right there. The man was not known for taking the lead and pulling away from people. He was known for actually spending three fourths of the race back in the field, getting his car right, and then the last quarter of the race, dominating and getting 4 Indy 500 wins. That's how you do an IndyCar. That is quite impressive and one of those types of, um, I don't know, one of those types of maturity things that I think you learn over the course of using these cars, that the cars do change quite drastically over the run. They can be quite different when you're, uh, what you know, one day to the next, you know, you, you get it all set up on Saturday and then you go out there on Sunday, it's a total different temperature and... Um, yeah, yeah and, and all kinds of things to adjust to. It can feel like a piece of junk uh, after the day before, possibly feeling great, just depending if it's up another 10 or 15 degrees in track temp, which, of course, can happen here in iRacing. So you have to stay on your feet. And at the same time, as you said, you can afford to use a good portion of the race, especially if you're going to get a lot of yellow flags to... Uh, you know, to analyze what's going on with the car. Is it a little aggressive on the tires today? Is it, uh, should I um, should I make a change on the anti-roll bar that I wasn't anticipating doing? Should I maybe go with a slightly different strategy for when I employ more weight jacker changes? And again, when you see a top split race like this and these drivers with such high ratings and uh, racing so close and so hard, I think you really get a feel for the finesse that it takes to um, to try to outsmart your competition in a series like this. Um, and not to keep going on, but in the fixed races that I've done with this level of competition in the official series, there is always that lead group of which all of these drivers are pretty much a part of, and they just seem to have it figured out where a lot of other drivers are playing catch-up. So 
you know, it's not a surprise to see me to see these drivers, Jorge Varela, Alexis Newsom. These are winners. Nacho LDR was um, was third place this morning in the race with Jorge Varela. So they know what they're doing. Extremely experienced at riding these cars out over the length of the stint, making those finesse adjustments. And exactly what you're talking about, Gary, when you get to be that level, well, then maybe you're on par with somebody like a Rick Mears. Um, when you start thinking about the whole stint, including the last four or five laps. And the whole picture is the way to go. And uh, right now, uh, look at a kind of a different picture. Let's take a look at the top two leaders. Look at this line through one and two. They are pretty much mirroring each other through one and two, mirroring each other a little. Well, he's starting to stew a little bit of a snake down the back stretch. That's fine, a little early for that. But look at this line different through three and four. Alexis way up top getting the clean air, also less tear, wear and tear on the tires. Uh, 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 Jorge has the uh, wheel turned a lot more to get down to the bottom, and uh, he is uh, using a little bit more of that right rear, hanging it out there to make that car go around that corner. Um, now you can see Alexis through two, one and two, going a little bit higher because she's now a lot closer, is getting a lot more aero wash. Uh, she is reeling in your leader right now. She's reeling him in. It seems as though Alexis uh, is, I, I want to say, in control of maintaining that gap to Jorge. I mean, at some point, if you're Alexis, you know the caliber of Jorge. He's already won a couple of times today. Obviously, got the pole position, is in great control of the of the car. You know, at some point, the question mark becomes: if you are Alexis or if you are Oscar, why bother passing if I can't walk away with this car? Why not just let Jorge be out there in the clean air and and absorb the most of the of the uh, fuel usage? save a little bit of fuel, stay back, maybe try to save your tires a little bit, and then plan for an attack later on in the stint or getting closer to the end of the race. Yeah, they need to think more about that when they go to California and Michigan. Everyone wants to get up front, <laughs> and they realize they got no place to go once they get up front. This is a, this is a super speedway, but uh, it doesn't really uh, race like, uh, like a super speedway because of the two different uh, uh, radiuses of the, uh, or actually bankings of the uh, of the corners. Also, the start finish line is a little bit farther down the front stretch than your average, uh, uh, I guess, mile and a half cookie cutter. Uh, but uh, uh, they, uh, you're right. Uh, she could be looking to uh, to save some gas, and then when they hit that pit stop, she can pit at the same time as him, and then there's less fuel in the tank. So she maybe she makes a decision up that way. Maybe she makes up, uh, you know, an entire lap or two difference. Uh, and during that uh, handover period, there's a caution, and she catches uh, a break while all of a sudden, kind of what happened to Pablo when the uh, top split on Monday's race, uh, he gets put down uh, at the back of the pack uh, because of just unfortunate bad timing. And timing is a lot to do with it, of course. Uh, now we do have a note. Oscar uh, Gonzalez now coming into the pits. Looked like he got it slowed up plenty of time, so... Now vacating so that be, third uh, position. This would be a scheduled uh, stop for, uh, I, I've raced with Oscar before. I call him OGG because it's just a lot <laughs> to say. And uh, o o OGG, uh, he's uh, definitely, uh, um, he he's using uh, the concrete portion of uh, pit road very liberally there. But uh, we're, we don't have any rules against that. Uh, but he's, uh, he's trying to get those freshies on and uh, possibly do the same strategy that Pablo tried to institute on Monday. Uh, sans the caution, of course. Of course, uh, everybody would be would be hoping. Well, for the most part, everybody would be hoping for no caution so that they can employ their green flag stops. But and I believe uh, Lexus Newsom's coming in now. Okay. No, I mean, nope. Yeah, she wasn't. She uh, wasn't. For, she must have did. A, she must have did a blink on my screen because all of a sudden she was falling in the rankings. Um, disregard that. Disregard that. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> used to that. Uh, I'm out here. Uh, virtualracing.network and our servers out here on the west coast of the United States. And of course, majority of these drivers, and we do see Alexis Newsom now making it into the pits, locking yeah, up a go. little bit there, but it looks like she got it stopped in time. Um, yeah, we're over here at the west coast, and sometimes we do get a little blinky with the European servers. This being a <laughs> lot of Europeans in it, I'm just very happy that Comcast is keeping us in the game here so far, and it looks great. I hope everybody's enjoying it out there. 4K ultra clear resolution i'm trevor greenfield we are over halfway here and you are watching virtual racing dot network i am joined and that is that that is that is really all of a sudden uh uh shafted alexis big time uh she was in the box when that came out so she's going to be caught a lap down and that's not going to be 
That's that's really going to ruin her race. Well, of course, we were talking about something else, and so there it was, Alvaro Gonzalez spinning away, and uh, as you said, we were just talking about timing, weren't we, Gary? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. And it my. just always <laughs> seems to happen uh, right when that leads... And it's because these cars are light on uh, the tires are worn. Uh, the track is at a pretty decent temperature. Um, the, the cars are as light as they're going to be, and uh, they like to get a little happy. And um, Alexis, uh, man, pit road has been her Achilles heel, whether it been the uh, the Lionheart Speedway Series or here, because, man, anytime she hits pit road for one reason or another, it just comes back to bite her, whether it be bad timing or uh, hitting the uh, hitting those cones and speeding or not hitting your marks or spinning out on pit road. I mean, you name it. She's ran the gamut of it uh, the last couple of weeks between here and uh, Lionheart. So it just uh, gets in your head eventually after a while. And you're like, come on. <laughs> yeah, it does. And and you have to keep your head down. You can't get carried away. Um, unfortunately, it, it's so easy to do because, again, you have to execute at such a high level to be in a series like this and do well. Uh, by the way, Nacho getting out just in front of Jesper Orman there uh, on their pit stops. Jesper had been on that split strategy and so had decided to pit earlier. So if we're counting, that is the second set of tires that Jesper's had to take. Um, but oh, and, and I see exactly what happened to Alvaro. Uh, he was trying to make a pit stop. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Coming around and, and it just messed up that entry onto pit road. So he, you know how easy it is to do that something. It's so easy. You've got to get it exactly right. You're coming down and you've got the weight tracker up and you've got to figure out how to get that thing slowed down and turned at the same time. And these cars really aren't meant to do all three of those things because for the most part, you, the, the cars are set up to go 220 miles an hour on a bank corner. So coming down right. to a flat apron and then having to jam on the brakes, which in real life, typically the, the brakes are cold um, and so, you know, that's an additional factor and that kind of plays a role. Sometimes uh, the tires are at a different temperature, so mm -hmm. you can easily lock up there coming into the pits. And uh, yeah, not hard to do to spin it around or get it loose coming in or lock up. So just yeah, a couple thing, couple things going on there. Um, a lot of folks I know adjust brake bias, maybe throw some to the rear uh, to prevent the rear from coming around like that. Um, also, uh, you know, they'll go a lot of negative weight jacker just at that point in time to keep, put the car as absolutely tight as possible to kind of prevent that from happening. Um, but really, it's the nature of the iRacing service, really, I think that uh, causes uh, us to kind of get brave and do that. If this was real IndyCar racing, okay, and uh, we're living in a NASCAR world, so uh, that's just an unfortunate thing that a lot of the stuff is based upon uh, how NASCAR races and they maybe think Indy cars can, can do exactly what it, NASCAR guys can come off a high speed off that bank and go right to pits. No problem. Uh, and that's because they got suspensions uh, that like to bend and that they have some clearance underneath their cars. Indy cars, they're like a surfboard. They don't like to bend. They have a suspension, but they're, it's really there for fine adjustments. Uh, if this was really car racing, they would be coming in off of pit uh, off the back stretch. Uh, going down the apron through three and four and then hitting pit road that way. Actually, there's actually a pit road here. And uh, some racing series actually uh, mandate the, uh, the use of that pit road. Uh, so you do not have incidents that happen uh, with uh, that you just saw. Um, fortunately, it was just uh, one car this time. But uh, you know, sometimes in these uh, other league races where you have a whole bunch of cars, 40 cars uh, in a league and, a, and on an oval race, guy catches the apron spins right up and uh, all of a sudden you have the indycar version of the big one and of course that is the uh thing that you don't <laughs> that you don't want to see is the big one yeah. um and and so we're fortunate that so far a single car incident but gary let's as we get one lap to go here till we get back under green on lap 47 um, we've got Craig Forsyth who has inherited this league or this lead and uh, Forsyth and AJ Musselman there in second place. Um, top American currently fighting. Uh, and of course, Craig Forsyth, Canadian with us here today. Um, these two drivers on a split strategy, do they have any hope whatsoever getting back onto the lead strategy or capitalizing and staying in the lead? Uh, I know both of these guys well. Um, I, I race with both in uh, different leagues. Uh, and I do know that uh, uh, Craig likes to gamble. 
Uh, Craig actually uh, kind of learn. Uh, I am sure has some input uh, that he's learned in the past from like the king of the fuel saving that I know of, and that's Alex Vanessant. Um, and he's right now racing for the Three Crowns team, but uh, he will race for LMC Gear and some league races uh, and their teammates together. And he is a king of fuel saving. So uh, I think with a little help, uh, it is if he's staying out, he thinks that there's an opportunity for him. So he's going to give it a shot. Same thing with AJ. And if AJ's smart and we're getting ready to go green, AJ is. Uh, I, if I was in AJ's shoes and I saw uh, Craig do that, I'm following Craig. Well, you make the smart moves of who you want to follow. And uh, I guess you do what you can. I love the photo that Craig Forsyth has used there. Um, we'll be continuing to solidify a lot oh, of these we got Here we're going to have that look on the inside. Muscleman going to muscle his way to the front there. You can't have an, a, an IndyCar race without an AJ in it. As I always like to say with him, side by side going into three and four. And you're going to see that top line come in. And now we got a bit of a pack race going on. And these DK guys behind them, they're like, who should I pick? Because you don't want to go three wide. And they're thinking about it. Well, that's Jorge Varela back up there into third. Nacho LDR in fourth, the two Necky Racing drivers there. And they're now making a, a move down the inside. Jorge Varela now taking a look. Uh, but the Necky Racing drivers are actually not on the lead lap at the moment. So they're trying to fight and get back yeah, onto that's right. the lead uh, lap. That's Oscar Gonzalez Gonzalez and uh, Pablo Francis uh, right there. So they both got caught out uh, uh, because of early stops again. That kind of cost both of those guys. But that's a, another reason of why they're kind of racing aggressively. If you're watching and you're from home, hey, I like this IndyCar racing, but I don't understand the rules. But I know about NASCAR. IndyCar does not have the lucky dog. So these guys actually have to race themselves around the leaders right here and to get back on the lead lap and then hope for a caution so they can get the wave around. That's all part of the rules you got to know. Uh, and so that is why those two drivers especially are trying to make their way around AJ Maselman, who is now at the front and has in fact been passed. And uh, that might not be a bad thing for AJ. If he's going on fuel strategy, now he has a car in front of him kind of punching a hole in the air. It's going to give him the arrow push, but it's going to give him some gas mileage all of a sudden. And then we've noticed that uh, uh, Craig has kind of fallen back to six now. Um, he maybe have dialed back the fuel map to see the, to ensure that he's going to try to make it. Uh, but it uh, looks like he is in this for the long haul as uh, everyone seems to be getting a bit of a train on him right now. But, uh, oh, we got a car to the inside into the grass, and I believe that's Octavio again. It is not Octavio. I'm looking to see who has fallen down the order. I'm not picking it up yet. It's, uh, well, it does it say... The green, it was one of the green and white cars, that's for sure. Okay, well, we're going to take a look here and see if we can figure yeah, it, it out. Yeah, it was Octavio uh, right around the, uh, right there on lap 51, uh, crossing the start-finish line, uh, hit the grass, and, <laughs> wow, rejoins the circuit. Uh, <laughs> Right there off the apron, a very gutsy thing, but that's going to cost them some track position and some momentum. Well, we were just able to watch that right now. AJ Maselman and Jorge Varela now battling at the front of this field. It's a little difficult to tell exactly what what's going on because of the two Necky racing cars up there, but um, it is the two Necky racing cars that have escaped off the front, but AJ Maselman here on your screen in the yellow. Three walking for the lead in the turn three. Five, the, uh, the, the uh, who is it, uh, the five was thinking a little, uh, thought better of that. That's probably a wise thing, but uh, we're getting down to uh, last 20 laps. It is, it is no longer time to play games. No longer time to play games at all as they go three wide again oh, and they make, make contact. Contact it's with teammates and that's Cardinal Sin number one. Hugo Olsen now finding himself up in six, up 14 positions, up in the middle of this, getting some contact on the outside as we were watching. Are, I believe those are two three-crown cars. I believe those are teammates. Rule one, racing your teammate, thou shall not crash thy teammate. Rule two, see rule one. That is the cardinal <laughs> rule of racing with teammates in IndyCar racing. IndyCar racing has more of a team dynamic than any other type of auto sports. Uh, unlike if you're watching from Europe, uh, Formula One, your teammate is your mortal enemy. Here, your teammate is your best friend, your wingman. 
Well, Orman, for the lead. Orman and uh, Olsen continue to battle in the back, but Varela has now gotten around AJ Maselman. Now taking over command again, but that does still leave Maselman there in second and up 11 spots on the day, of course, on that alternate fuel strategy. Nacho, LDR getting by as well for Mass Devils Racing. Ooh. So yeah, the five uh, nearly ran up uh, right up there on AJ. I think AJ's dialed it down a little bit, and uh, he's trying to conserve while everyone else around them is pretty much good to go to the end. So they are uh, engine map one, pedal to the floor. Uh, let's, uh, let's try to set a track record. <laughs> well, these drivers get set uh, here for the last 16 laps coming up here of this race. And it's Jorge Varela in first, not show LDR in second. These two battle it out for first place at the moment. It is Varela, LDR, and uh, Orman, actually, the other Mass Devils racing car. They're not actually running for top position, but trying to help out teammates to try to get that lap back. We've got That's right, I might have misspoke. I, I don't think Hugo is actually a, a Three Crowns car. I thought I saw the Three Crowns logo on the side, but I'm looking up right now. Exactly. Just, uh, just, just hard, close racing right there. But uh, teammates always need to give each other a little bit of an extra room. <laughs> well, anytime you're up here racing over 220, you got to give that extra inch if you can. But hey, sometimes it gets tight up there. As you mentioned, the arrow push being a big factor. Hugo Olsen racing for Team Power Slide. Uh, great member of that team, bringing a lot of success um, recently as well. Um, and we got a chance to cover quite a few races where Hugo was... Uh, was up in the front winning races in the IndyCar iRacing series. But meantime, we've got Jorge Varela and Nacho LDR right wow. now. One and two side by side. And, and, and Jorge was, uh, OGG was giving Jorge zero, zero room there whatsoever. Uh, no, that was Pablo Francis, actually, that was giving him zero room. So it's like, wow, man, you're... You're at the tail end of the lead lap, but I know you have every right to race to stay in the lead lap. But man, that was that was kind of forcing your guy, your your uh, the guy that you're attacking down to the apron. And when you clip the apron here, that's not good. Nope, generally isn't. No matter what, um, <laughs> it's not good to touch that apron uh, when you're at full oh, speed. Oh. Wait but, till next week. <laughs> oh yes. Well, I, again, uh, we, we'll see how that all works out. There's also protests that are available if if somebody does the wrong thing going between or below the the apron. However, um, we continue here at Kentucky. We've got just 12 laps to go. It's Jorge Varela and Nacho LDR with Jesper Orman, Hugo Olson, Octavio uh, Rondoletto, and I was just letting I was just uh, let know in the YouTube chat room that. Uh, I believe Octavio is an official. They're, they're telling me that he's an official IndyCar team driver for Hunko Hollinger Racing, um, which is awesome news. I was not aware of that, but great to have Octavio in our field and part of this effort. Yeah, and I, think, so. I think that might have been a response to me saying that he was a little aggressive. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Tony Stewart drove these things for two years before he kind of figured it out himself. So... Uh, uh, racing these things at aggressive, uh, whether it be real life or here, doesn't necessarily always pay off. But uh, right now, Octavio, I'm calling him the lawnmower because he did make that uh, run through the grass there in the uh, tri-oval area, and he's still rolling straight uh, in the top ten. And if you... something happens with uh, this battle with the leader, with this, well, not quite bat marker, but the car at the end of the lead lap, he could quickly find himself in a podium position. Well, and that's just all part of it again patience being at the right place at the right time and i have to say this is the time to go gary it is under 10 laps nine laps to go we're looking back through the field who's going to do it will it be jorge varela will it be nacho jesper hugo octavio who will come through with this win will we have another yellow flag that is the question will this one finish under green who has tires who has weight tracker to go Who's used up their car and who hasn't? That is the question. They're side by side back there for sixth position with Octavio and Javier Gonzalez, Carlos Palermo, all three of these drivers running side by side by side. Who's it going to be, Gary? Well, I tell you what, it, uh, the guys that uh, tried to gamble, uh, they're still on the track. So uh, uh, Craig and uh, Musselman, uh, so that's just a nod to their fuel mileage. But uh, right now, I think... Uh, I think Jorge uh, has this thing. Um, 
I think he's a little frustrated with uh, the, uh, the, the DK cars in front of him. Uh, but I don't really see anyone uh, coming up to uh, really challenge him at the moment. Well, I'm watching back here, and I'm seeing a golden blue car come up very, very slowly on the back of Nacho. I don't know if Jesper Orman has possibly something in reserve. He's one of those drivers that sometimes keeps a little bit in his hip pocket, if you know what I mean, keeps that ace up the sleeve. Could well, be used he, here. But, but he's got to get around a teammate. Uh, and it, right now, you know, if I'm in, if I'm in the position where Nacho is, I want to win, right? But uh, I'm going to race my teammate as closely as possible. But if we're getting to the closing laps and it comes down to the guy behind me winning and my teammate winning, my teammate's going to win every single time. So I'm going to make myself as wide as possible, kind of do the old Al Jr. in '83 in Indianapolis, trying to get the win for Daddy there before Tom Skiba passed him. I'm going to make my car as wide as possible. You're going to have to work at past me to get to my teammate. <laughs> you got to do the work. And uh, maybe they will, maybe they won't, as they're side by side just behind for second place. Yeah, and you see how quickly he pulls right up in front to give him the arrow wash? It's all part of controlling that. Just a few yeah. laps to go here, Gary. He even went high that time to... Uh, to kind of do the arrow block wash on that one as well. Ooh. Yellow, yellow, yellow. And there's your caution. There is your caution. And that is the race. See if we can get that pulled up here. Looks like it's Pear, Pear Bime uh, Mickelson that has had that crash. Let's go back to that. <laughs> See if we can catch that. Just spinning through the infield there. We're a little late on it. We'll see if we can back it up and see what happened to Pear. But uh, oh. perhaps... Yeah, caught the apron. Just caught the apron after sliding in front of the 21 car there. Just as we were talking about a moment ago, uh, the wrong place to catch the apron, you're turning the car. It just uh, sets the, the rear wheels at a different rate. And uh, away you go. Unfortunately, four pair was running great here today. Nacho LDR with two laps to go is shown in second place. Oh, Harry, yeah, Jorge I've... Varela, I think, is going to win this one under caution. Am I right? Yeah, we're not going to get. I think, yeah, I think we're done. No gimmicks here. No green white checker. Uh, they solve it the uh, old fashioned way on the racetrack under green flag. And if it happens to end under yellow, that's your advertised distance right there. So uh, this is it right here. He's going to take the uh, white flag here, I think, this lap. And that will seal the deal uh, for uh, round one of week one of season four of Indy Fix. Next week, we're heading to uh, Nashville Super Speedway for the first time. I am excited about that, but I tell you what else I'm excited about. A really great race here today. Uh, it's, a, it's a shame to see it end under caution because really Jorge led this one flag to flag. Um, there wasn't much que question unless it was going to be Nacho pro possibly coming up and challenging there from second place as teammate. But uh, Jorge was dominant. Um, I did not see any wrong moves, no no. No wiggles of the car, no exiting and slightly getting loose, no arrow draft, uh, arrow push moments or anything behind anyone else. It's not a surprise. Jorge, very highly rated iRacer and coming away with multiple wins today. I, this is probably like win three in a row. So, you know, Gary, what do you do when you're that good? You get three wins in a row, including the top race potentially of the week. Uh, so uh, you wait till 6.15 to do the next race, and then 8.15 <laughs> and do the next race, uh, uh, if you're on that kind of role. Actually, uh, this is probably what I'll be spending my time doing tomorrow. Statistically speaking, this is one of my better courses, so I'll be uh, trying to beef up on my rating a little bit tomorrow as well. But, uh, hey, when you're good at the track, you're good at the track. I was trying to get uh, uh, Alex Vanessan into this race as well because uh, there's only one other person other than uh, Jorge that I know of that kind of owns this place, and it's him. And uh, he's here in America with me and couldn't get away from work. But uh, when you own a place, you own a place, just like Roger Penske. And he eventually just bought it for real at Indianapolis. Well, there you go. Jorge Varela does take the checkered flag first. In fact, Jor uh, Nacho LDR there in second. Jorge making his way around very quickly. 
Wonder if we're going to get a chance to see any donuts, but a lot of reason to be happy. Um, he's maximized this fixed setup here at Kentucky of iRacings and shown some dominance, able to really get it figured out. And those, I, I think for future race races, I, I think this is setting a precedent. Uh, Mass Devils Racing are, is the team to really um, watch out for. I mean, two out of the top three finishers coming from Mass Devils and uh, what, a, what a fantastic day for the team, but also the day really belonging to Jorge Varela. And there's a lot of smoke on the front straightaway and so many different drivers celebrating, including it Jesper Orman, who donut comes on party. third. It is a donut party right now uh, at the uh, start finish line. Hey, a little known fact for everybody, though, that uh, watching from home again and uh, thinks that uh, donuts are uh, our NASCAR thing, really... Uh, Donuts were kind of uh, started by Alex Zanardi uh, when he was driving Indy cars, and since then it became a uh, a regular thing among all forms of Indy car or in all forms of racing for that matter. So, uh, if you go back and ever want to uh, do a uh, trivia breaker for uh, somebody in a bar, uh, the, the first of your donuts were done by an Indy car driver. I remember that. I don't remember exactly what race it was, but I remember watching that and how offended everyone was that Alex Zanardi would do such <laughs> right. a horrible thing, especially when he went to Formula One. They were right. just so offended if he would possibly do that. Nowadays, drivers doing that all the time. And of course, even, you know, all of the different post-race celebrations. Jorge Varela here knocking off his left part of his wing and Mass Devils here lining up on the start finish straight away, a beautiful display of all of their cars race winners here and showed exceptionally well at the Kentucky Speedway. Gary, it was a great finish, not only from them, but a number of drivers who, you know, I was talking to Jesper Orman ahead of the race and he didn't think that he possibly would end up here on the podium. Nevertheless, he did. And there is your finishing order on the screen. So I'm going to take a look over into our broadcast booth and see if we can get anybody in I'm seeing a couple of drivers popping in, and that is fantastic. I think we can go ahead and uh, see if we can get uh, Jesper Orman, if he has the ability to hear us. Jesper, are you there? Copy, I can hear you. All right. Jesper, um, talking to you for a minute before the race... And you were saying how you were struggling here. You didn't think you could do it. Uh, you, you jumped out there, got onto a split strategy, and you, you ended up third. You pulled home a podium finish in a race that you thought you were going to struggle with. Hey, congratulations, and uh, what, a great a start, what a great way to start the season. Yeah, thanks, man. I, you know, practice didn't feel very good. I, I felt like this is not my type of track, but, uh, well, I got on the... On the Split strategy there. I got a bit lucky there with a second yellow coming out. And I got to say, though, that I um, feel very, very bad for my teammate, Alexis. She was on for P1 or P2 here. So she got uh, screwed over there by that yellow. But, Absolutely. you know, it happens. So, yeah. But, uh, you know, after that, this, the last green stint, I, I felt like I had a really good pace. And Hugo was charging from behind. And, uh, I had like a, I, I passed uh, Nacho, a real nice pass, and then he decided to like do a huge dive bomb on me, which I didn't appreciate at all. So I don't like to see that kind of racing uh, in this split. So I get a, I'm real disappointed about uh, that move. But you know, I guess it's racing. We he almost killed both me and uh, Hugo. But yeah, that's maybe the way they want to race in Mask Devils. I don't know. But anyway, P1, P2, congrats to them. Absolutely. Uh, well, and, and that's the thing about hearing it from your side in the cockpit. That's why we're. it's so great to have you join us here uh, in, in the interview afterwards and hear your thoughts, because from our standpoint, it's all close racing unless it happens to show up on the camera. But uh, nevertheless, tight quarters, tight racing, glad nobody actually made contact and everybody was able to stay in it. And again, congratulations not only to yourself, but um, it's too bad Alexis couldn't get up there because that would be a couple of Three Crowns Racing drivers to be on the podium. But nevertheless, you've got to feel good leading the team up there and starting the season high strength the field uh, race and starting the season. You, you should be third in the points at the end of this week if uh, there isn't a higher strength of field. Yeah, absolutely. That feels good. It's a good start, and I'm also happy for this uh, Eurosoft broadcast for a first successful race, I think. So I'm really happy, and congrats, and well done. 
absolutely well thanks for making uh yourself a, a part of it we look forward to of course seeing more of your teammates thomas christensen um and others uh hopefully going to be joining us uh, in some of the interviews in the future but uh congratulations jesper we'll look forward to seeing you for the rest of the season and now um gary uh let's see here i think we got a couple other drivers with us here we do have uh, let's see. Can we bring in Nacho? Nacho LDR, are you there, my friend? Can you hear me? I want to know. I want to know what Nacho says because we just had shots fired on that interview right here. So I want. I want to give this man an opportunity to to make an answer on that one. Nacho, was it as close as he's saying it is, or should he go back and check the replay? Oh, in the first term, uh, sorry, my English is very low level. And That's fine. That's I try fine. Do your to best. respond. <laughs> no, okay. go ahead. Just, just talk, talk about the specifically. Go ahead and talk about the incident that uh, uh, Jesper was talking about. Uh, he he seems to think that uh, it was a little irresponsible on your part. Um, to, uh, to, I mean, tell us from your point of view. I mean, uh, we're not in the cockpit and. Uh, Obviously, he hasn't seen the replay yet. So, it, was it as uh, irresponsible as he's saying it is, or were you just making a move? For me, is this is racing. Racing is uh, the press your opportunities and mm -hmm. take a very very risk for racing. Is mm -hmm. for me, it's not uh, the other mode for understanding racing. Is a movement on the limit. For uh, I, uh, I understand Jesper is angry for me, but it's not first uh, battle together. Well, so it's uh, so I I think I catch what you're saying. It's two I together. It, it takes two to tango, and uh, yeah, definitely not just some close racing there. That was some fun to watch from our side, but maybe a little too close. We don't know. Who's to say? You got second place though. Congratulations to yeah, you and uh, and of course to Mask Devils Racing. One two finish here to start your season um, must feel excellent to start uh, the whole season. Now you'll be in second place in the points. Congratulations! Thank you, thank you. And uh, sorry, uh, one of my teammates uh, say to me to the the yellow flag. Is uh, the other driver Alvaro say to me is uh, lost the car on the procedement to brake or okay. pitting in? Mm -hmm. uh, is is an incident for race? I review together with my teammate, but it's not it's not uh, explained exactly, but is a, a great mistake for part of Alvaro for not. Uh, learning correct to insight on pitting in yeah it's hard it's hard so uh nothing um tell him it's okay it happens to the best of us <laughs> we've seen it happen in real racing before um so if it happens uh, even at the sim level uh everybody's human so uh no sweat yeah. on him um there's and that's why we always have this saying there's always next week yes. so and the uh, other and the other question for me um for mes mesquet devils is the best uh p1 p2 and the other drivers in the top 10 is very 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 good start for the season but uh i try hard for the same results but it's very very complicated it's a very good driver here excellent excellent drivers in this field uh very high i rating and uh to come out uh, we, we did see the incident there on the screen that I think Hugo is talking about, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, that uh, Jesper was talking about just a moment ago. But um, yeah, just close racing. And unfortunately, uh, some drivers getting the tough side of that and some drivers coming out ahead and Nacho ends up on in second place. And we'll see where everything ends up next week on Championship Thursday. Nacho, would you like to say any words in Espanol for the listeners on YouTube? Nada, pues eh, muchísimas gracias a todos los seguidores que habéis podido ver la carrera. Y nada, el resultado inesperado completamente. Sabíamos que al menos uno o dos pilotos tendrían el nivel para estar adelante, pero no creo que hubiese sido posible un resultado mejor. Muchísimas gracias a toda la gente que ha estado en, el, en este canal de YouTube y nos vemos en las siguientes retransmisiones.
All right. Bueno, thank you so much for joining us, Nacho. And we will look forward to having you on uh, many more races to come. You're a very fast driver. We've seen you finishing at the top many races in this series. So uh, congratulations, second place. And uh, we'll see you next Thursday on Championship Thursday. Yeah. So, uh, New circuit. <laughs> absolutely gracias muchas gracias um so uh okay. let's also let's also uh move over and see if we can get jorge varela is with us in the chat room and he's probably still spraying champagne jorge can you hear me muted yeah oh, i hey. listen to you but there we go. Uh, he 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 not talk english Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Would Would you just ask uh, Jorge, please, to um, talk about his race in Espanol, and he can say whatever he'd like. Jorge, que puedes contestar en español las preguntas que te hagan. Jorge. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Felicidades, uh, Jorge. <laughs> Mucho uh, uh, bueno trabajo. Uh, es escucha. I, I... <laughs> Nope, I don't know. I, I, he was on server mute for a minute, and I took off the mute, and, and then he, he dropped, just dropped out. All of a sudden, yeah. So, well, I don't know that we'll get a chance to talk with Jorge, and, and we'll try to get that sorted out uh, next time. But uh, nevertheless, it was a great race, um, and a lot of close racing, and and you know what? Some, yeah, some uh, some tempers flaring here between Jesper Orman and uh, Three Crowns Racing, and possibly. The leading team, Mass Devils. I don't know, uh, Gary. What do you think uh, going forward? We're going to have some more on-screen fire. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, um, most of the time after the first race, I, I would say most people are kind of still polite with each other, and uh, the gloves came off here rather quickly, and we still have a long season to go. And like I said, uh, we uh, in the IndyCar community, it's not very big. Uh, we remember names. And uh, we keep that all in our mind that when we're racing somebody or uh, or, or whatever, uh, we're, we're going to cut the nice guys slack. And we're going to cut the people that don't like us at no slack. So uh, I don't see a lot of slack being cut between uh, the Mass Devils here and Three Crowns going forward this season. And we've only gone through one round, guys. That's a battle. We haven't decided the war yet. Well, what, let's. Can we give it one more shot? Uh, Nacho, can you uh, try and ask uh, Jorge? Uh, because I see he's back. I tried. I tried to tell. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Okay. No. Well, I, I, in the uh, we Discord, mm -hmm. it's, it's impossible to talk with him. Okay. I, I oh. Didn't... Okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay. Well, we'll get it sorted out for the next race. In the meantime, absolutely congratulations to Jorge Nacho, the rest of the Mass Devils team. A great showing here on Championship Thursday for our very first race. Jesper Orman bringing home a great third place, upset about some different things, and also Alexis Newsom getting caught out there. Hugo Olsen for Team Power Slide bringing it home in fourth place. Javier Gonzalez in fifth. Octavio Rondaletto finishing it in sixth. Carlos Palermo in seventh. Alvaro Gonzalez in eighth. Alexis Newsom ending up in ninth. And Guillermo uh, Pecarul ending up in 10th. A, a great day for a number of drivers. Some drivers getting caught out. Gary, I had a lot of fun. I can't wait for next Thursday at Nashville. Yeah, Alexis uh, did uh, did get the shaft there uh, by getting caught out. Did have the purple lap at a 24.755. Hang her hat on that one a little bit, but I know she uh, rather not be uh, back in at the bottom half of the top 10, rather be up in the upper half of the top 10. Uh, it's going to be uh, also two other guys to point out. Let's talk about Craig Forsyth and AJ Musselman most for a second. They went 62 laps on that second stint. And that's how much fuel they saved under those caution periods. Uh, so they were they were probably half power to get home. <laughs> and they finished uh, 15th and 16th respectively still on the lead lap. Uh, but uh, they still finished the race 62 laps on that last stint. So shout out to them. Um, next week's going to be interesting because we're going through a race that's new, a track that's new to a service. Uh, it only came out last season. Uh, there wasn't an IndyCar set up for step for last season, so most people that tried it with an IndyCar kind of experimented or made their own. Now that it's on a fixed schedule, we get a fixed setup for it for this season, so a lot of people have been practicing. I've been on it myself. 
uh, IndyCar uh, went back. Uh, it's been a while since IndyCar has actually visited the Nashville Super Speedway. Uh, but we're going to see uh, speeds close to 200, if not over 200 miles per hour there. But it's going to, right now, as I see it, as a one groove racetrack with an apron on the front stretch that will absolutely kill you. So even in the top split, I expect it to be a challenge for these guys. So I hope they get their tempers under uh, wraps here. They got a week to kind of let it uh, to sit and uh, focus back on uh, making a round for the first couple of laps of this Nashville Super Speed Race. Because I think next week is going to be quite the challenge, to be quite honest with you. Uh, this was probably the easy week uh, for them. Next week is going to be probably uh, closer to around the lines of actual real work. Well, once again, thank you so much, everybody, uh, including Gary. Thanks for joining me here in the booth. It was a pleasure having you, and I'm uh, so glad that you joined us uh, so far for this race and hopefully the rest of this season. It's been great having you here. You've brought a lot. Also, thank you so much to the competitors made today possible and brought their great eye rating and their, their uh, great competition skills made this a fantastic race already for the season and finally thank you to everybody on youtube for watching subscribing liking this video make sure you do subscribe to so get notified of all of our great broadcasts including tomorrow friday we'll be doing the indycar i racing series again and then of course on sundays we have the u.s indycar league that's a brand new season as well that you want to catch so on behalf of myself here virtual racing dot network i'm trevor greenfield and also on behalf of Gary Godso, it's been an awesome pleasure presenting this iRacing IndyCar Series fixed race for the first race of the season. We'll look forward to seeing you the rest of this season right here on virtualracing.network. Thanks a lot for joining us today, everybody. Until next week, so long for now. Bye-bye. Good night.